We're here today to help you, the director, professional, or the student, to get through the rehearsal, performance, or lesson with minimal distraction if your instrument suddenly breaks down. We will discuss common do's and don'ts and try to clear up common misperceptions. We are all instructors at Minnesota State College Southeast Technical, training students in the band instrument repair program, a program dedicated to training professional technicians who work in repair facilities around the world. We are also members of NAPERT, the National Association of Professional Band Instrument Repair Technicians, an organization dedicated to sharing techniques to improve the quality of instrument repair worldwide. At www redwingmusicrepair.org. You will find handouts that contain the recommended tool and supply list that is in PDF form that you can download. We will refer to many of these tools in the presentation. Here are some tools that we recommend you not use. An example being channel lock pliers. Another type of pliers that is often misused include serrated jaw pliers. These pliers rarely do any good for a music instrument often adding cost to a repair. The tools list provided in your handout will steer you towards sources of smooth jawed pliers and other tools that will help get your instrument in good enough shape to play before taking it immediately to the repair shop. So let's begin. A focus of this video is to ensure quick temporary repairs using items common to most band rooms or offices the first handy temporary fix-it is... Masking tape! If a tenon cork has gone missing, you can wrap the cork groove, that's the bed on the tenon where the cork sits, with masking tape. The blue painter's tape is recommended here. Cut the tape so it nests inside the cork groove. Lubricate the tenon with a little bit of cork grease and you are good to go until the instrument goes to the repair shop for a proper repair. The pre-stick synthetic tenon cork material also works well for emergencies. Next is a partially loose tenon cork. Now here's a don't. Don't use super glue. While super glue may hold the cork, it is inappropriate for the application and costs up to $50 to remove when a cork is installed. The answer? Masking tape. Leave the cork remnant intact. Wrap the tenon with masking tape. Apply your cork grease and you should be in good shape until the instrument makes it to the repair shop. Remember that leaks in any instrument can frustrate even the most gifted player and that includes leaks at the tenons. These repairs work just long enough to get through one rehearsal or a concert. Always take the instrument in for professional repair soon after your troubleshooting. On a saxophone where the neck cork is partially missing, there's a leak that needs to be addressed. Peel off as much of the existing cork as you can, then wrap the neck up to the cork line with some masking tape. Apply enough tape that it'll hold the mouthpiece securely. Apply some cork grease and the instrument should make it through until you can get it to the repair shop. Next are loose flute head corks. Flute head corks should be snug inside the head joint, not peering out the small end as shown. What to do? You guessed it! Masking tape! Remove the head cork from the head joint. Wrap the cork with a single layer of masking tape. Apply your cork grease, then drop it into the head joint. Add or remove tape until you see this much of the head cork through the embouchure hole. Using your cleaning rod, push the head cork further until the line gauge on the cleaning rod is visible in the center of the embouchure hole. Okay, on saxophones, missing keyguard screws are very common. Here's what we want you to use to secure the keyguard until a repair technician can replace the screw with a proper one. Either a pipe cleaner or a twist tie, like that that you use for a bread wrapper. Just loop it through and twist it and that will hold it long enough for the repair. Please though, don't use paper clips. They tend to scratch the body and even worse, it can destroy the threads needed to hold the screw, meaning that the repair technician will need to replace the body part, 
that can cost at least $25. Another common mistake is replacing the lost screw with a non-matching screw. Look at these two. They appear to be similar in size, but when observed more closely, the dissimilarities become much more obvious. One is for a Bundy saxophone, the other is for a Yamaha saxophone. Substituting one for the other results in the same repair needed to fix the paperclip damage, and that's expensive and unnecessary. Staying with saxophones, a sticky or tight neck tenon is common. Causes may include dirt, corrosion, dents, or other like damage, and mismatched parts. It is important to know that, even among the same models of saxophones, the necks are individually fit and not meant to be used on other saxophones. It is a good idea to discourage your students from swapping necks and mouthpieces. Common isopropyl alcohol works well as a cleaner. It is found in common mouthpiece cleaners like that shown. Spray the neck tenon and wipe with a clean, low lint rag. Spray the rag then and wipe the neck socket at the top of the saxophone. Here is our sample before and after. And here is the debris we removed. Yum! <laughs>